Hey guys, how you all doing? The Wrestling Guy back here today. Welcome to another episode of SmackDown Breakdown, the series where we break down everything that happened on this week's SmackDown. Talk about the matches, talk about other moments that happened, talk about some of the things that have been rumoured and that we have heard of that are going to be happening in a couple of weeks, building up to the next premium live event, which is Extreme Rules. So if you guys do go on to enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't want miss any of the content coming up on the channel. And thank you very much for all of your support so far on the channel. Some of the views and the comments we've been getting have been fantastic. So thank you very much, guys. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. And let's kick things off with what happened on this week's SmackDown. So we'd kick things off with the bloodline so friday's show would kick off with the undisputed universal champion uh roman reigns and the bloodline coming down to the ring uh this started off as what we thought was going to be a uh, just a standard promo um from paul Heyman, uh which would then give way to the head of the table um talking about the honorary sammy zane um zane would uh, start preaching and and acting all loyal to, to the bloodline he would, he was referring to Reigns as his tribal chief he publicly acknowledged him as his tribal chief as he said it um, and this then led to a really interesting kind of conversation between Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn where Roman Reigns basically turned around and said why do you follow us why do you tag along with us like what is your purpose why are you here um and from 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 what happened there, he kind of looked like we were going to see maybe Sami Zayn getting kicked out of the bloodline. Maybe we were going to see a beat down towards him. Maybe we were going to see something happen to get him out of the bloodline. But then Jey Uso would um, then come forward and kind of rip Sami Zayn's shirt off. And it's kind of... It, it, I, I found this storyline interesting for a little while between Jey Uso and Sami Zayn because these are two guys that clearly aren't on the same page. They're not firing on all cylinders together. Sami Zayn is is very kind of happy to, to get on well with Jey Uso, but Jey Uso is not really accepting him to be in the bloodline. At this stage, I think we all thought that um, we were going to see a bloodline beat down on Sami Zayn. Um, but what we would see, we'd actually see... Uh, Roman Reigns presents Sami Zayn with his own shirt, um, which you could see Jey Uso really didn't like, didn't appreciate. Um, I thought this was a great television segment to start the show. I thought this really got the show off to a good start. I thought we really had some good things going on here. Um, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think we're going to end up seeing Sami Zayn and Jey Uso have a match at some point. Whether well, it might even be an Extreme Rules, um, and there may be a stipulation involved. I'm not, I don't know, but. I, I'm really liking the storyline. I'm excited to see where it goes. So, yeah, that's a great start to SmackDown this week for me. Then we would have our first match of the evening. It was Liv Morgan versus Lacey Evans. So the SmackDown Women's Champion, Liv Morgan. Uh, obviously, we now know that it's going to be Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey at Extreme Rules for the SmackDown Women's title. This was a good opportunity for Liv Morgan to get some momentum going into Extreme Rules. Um... And she would pick up the win over over uh, Lacey Evans as well, obviously hitting the code breaker and then into the oblivion. Um, after the match, she would tease that she doesn't have the so-called killer instinct to beat Rousey. Um, and then we would see a part that I really, really liked. Um, we would see the, uh, Liv Morgan put Lacey Evans on a table and jump off the ring post and drop dive her through with a sentinel through the table. This is really, really good. I was really, really happy to see this. Um, this was a very excited wrestling guy when we saw this. Um, the match itself was very kind of 50-50, but everything that happened after the match was absolutely fantastic. Um, Liv Morgan needs some of this edge. She needs some of the, the fans to kind of believe that she stands a chance of beating Ronda Rousey cleanly. Um, I think coming off of the bat of coming off the back of the match she had with Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam is very mixed opinions on Liv Morgan as the champion at the moment. So I think she really needs to um she really needs to kind of prove herself 
But personally, I don't think she needs to prove herself. But I think to a lot of fans, they feel that she needs to prove herself in this match against Ronda Rousey. Um, and it was nice to see the fans being fully behind Liv Morgan. So if this is what they need to do to get the fans behind her, then I'm happy to see it. So I, I'm looking forward to this match at Extreme Rules, but obviously we'll talk about it, that a bit more when we do our Extreme Rules predictions. Our second match of the evening would be a tag team match. It would be the New Day versus the Maximum Male Models. Um, so obviously the New Day, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, and the Maximum Male Models, Mansoir and Massé, um, with Max Dupree and Maxine Dupree from at ringside. Um, the match was fairly basic. There wasn't too much that happened in the match. Um, the interesting part was the finish, where Maxine would um, distract Mace, Massé, uh, allowing New Day to pick up the first victory um, for, for a long time. Um, this would then lead to Massé losing his temper a little bit. Um, he would start getting a, trying to aggressively rip his jacket off, and then he slammed it down. I, I have a feeling this could be the beginning of the end for the Maximum Male Models. I think we could end up seeing a, um, a breakup here at some point. Maybe see um, them branching off in, in separate ways. Um, I know myself and the chairman have both said that um, Mace would be a great fit in Judgment Day. So maybe we'll see something with that. And um, will we see the return of LA Knight as well? Um, if obviously the Max Dupree stuff doesn't work. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that over the next couple of weeks and see if anything else unfolds um, in that regard. Our next match of the evening was going to be a huge match. Uh, get the reinforcements down for this one because it was going to be the Alpha Academy member Otis and Braun Strowman. Um, the Monster of Monsters and the big guy from the Alpha Academy were about to, to rage like bulls towards each other. Um, this was a great back and forth match and great hard hitting moves and you could tell you could tell um you could tell that they really kind of were gonna go all out on this one. Otis hit Strowman with a Vader bomb, which I thought was really, really a nice tribute there. Um but then Strowman would hit Otis with yet another power bomb. This is a couple the second week in a row I think he's hit Otis with a power bomb. Um I mean Otis isn't a little guy, so that's not exactly gonna be it's not exactly going to be easy to do that, so fair play to him. Um, I think Braun Strowman, since his return, he has looked great. And I think he's clearly motivated um, to kind of push himself back up the ranks in the company. Um, and he's massively over with the fans as well. Um, the fans are really, really behind Braun Strowman. And I think that we could see him push him for titles in no time because he has come back with a vengeance, he has come back with a force. And he is doing a fantastic job. Um, so we have to keep an eye on Braun Strowman because I think the Strowman Express is going to be running through um, anytime soon. So keep an eye out. Then we had a Drew McIntyre and Karen Cross brawl. So Drew McIntyre um, went into the ring to address Karen Cross and the recent issues. Um, and they, he would reveal that they were going to have a match at Extreme Rules. It's going to be a strap match. Um, so it is going to be Drew McIntyre and Karrion Cross at Extreme Rules in a strap match. So that's going to be interesting. I'm really excited to see to see what happens in that one. Um, as we expected, Karrion Cross would attempt to hit a sneak attack, um, but uh, McIntyre would obviously see it coming and start whipping with the with the leather strap. Um, and then we would see Scarlett come down, cause a distraction. Um, Drew McIntyre would end up getting caught in the cross jacket um, and eventually putting him to sleep. Um, I think that this is a really, really good rivalry that's been building up over the past few weeks between these two. Um, there's still obviously all of the stuff going on with the White Rabbit, which we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on. Um, the chairman of the board is going to be doing a separate video on that, so I don't want to talk about that too much on here. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this match at Extreme Rules. I, th I think this is going to be really good. Uh, the next match we had on the card was a women's match. It was Raquel Rodriguez versus Dakota Kai. Um, now, this is an interesting one. Obviously, a lot of history between these two um, female wrestlers here. Um, and a lot to kind of uh, keep an eye on with this one as well. Um, obviously, we were, gonna, we were inevitably going to see uh, an interference from the other members of Damage Control, Bailey and EO Sky. Um, and that would come not not too early on in the match actually it was nice to see them actually get a little bit um a little bit there um uh, but then when they would come down it would then obviously be a three-on-one attack and then we would see Shotzi come down to the ring um now Shotzi has been undervalued and underutilized for a long time um 
And if I'm honest, if it takes her having to team up with Raquel Rodriguez in order to get some TV time and to get some matches in, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see them do whatever they can. As long as we're seeing Sh Shotzi on TV, I think Shotzi is one of the most underrated, undervalued members of the women's division in WWE at the moment. She's she's so good, and I, I just hope we see her a bit more on TV. Um, I think we could almost do with... I think a lot of fans are confused with this because obviously Shotzi has had her differences with uh, Raquel Rodriguez. Um, so maybe if we see Shotzi maybe come down and cut a promo explaining what her intentions are, that might help clear things up. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And then we would get to our main event, the Brawling Brutes versus the Usos. Um, now, the Usos are on an unstoppable run as the Undisputed Tag Champions at the moment. Also, we know the Brawling Brutes, um, Butch and Ridge Holland, are earned the right to face them in the main event. Um, obviously, we had the loudmouth uh, Sami Zayn at ringside as well, which is always always good fun to see. Um, it was actually a fairly back and forth match all the way through. Um, we were attempted to see, we obviously were going to see um, some interference from Sami Zayn at some point, but then Sheamus would come down to the ring and then Imperium came down to the ring and it was obvious Imperium were going to come down and interfere at some point. Um, with that, with that going on, we then heard that um, the Intercontinental Champion Gunther was going to challenge Sheamus to a rematch next week on SmackDown. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Um, uh, due to everything that was happening with the interference and everything else, Usos would be able to take advantage, hit a one D on Butch, and get the one, two, three to retain their championships. Um, now the storytelling in this match was actually really good. Um, the involvement on the outside was maybe a bit too much, but it didn't take a lot away from what actually was happening in the ring, um, which was some really solid stuff. So yeah, I, I'm not too disheartened about that. Um, the talent involved was great as well. Sami Zayn is a fantastic character. Sheamus is obviously a veteran. He knows what he's doing. Imperium are really, really good. The Usos are just on another level. Um, I think it's difficult to kind of say whether or not the Usos are the best team in, in wrestling. Um, I, I, I don't think that there is a lot of doubt to be honest. I think, I think they have proven themselves. The bloodline is unstoppable at the moment. They are the, the face of the company at the moment. Um, and I think that we are going to see the Usos and Roman Reigns as champions for, for a long time going forward. So I have to keep an eye on that one. But that was your SmackDown breakdown for the week. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Do let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of this week's SmackDown and what you'd like to see maybe in a couple of weeks or two weeks away, I believe, until uh, Extreme Rules. What would you like to see happening between now and then? Hit the thumbs up button. Let me know down below in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.